The third artist and album I'm going to bring to the table here to share the love with is the original Fleetwood Mac featuring Peter Green and their consummate album Then Play On, which is the last album featuring Peter Green in the lineup. Now they went on, of course, in different configurations to really hit it big worldwide, but uh, their best moments are uh, in this period. And this record hails from, I guess, 68, around 69. For my money, Peter Green, out of all of the great guitarists to come out of the white blues era, is absolutely head and shoulders the best. Why that is, I couldn't exactly tell you, except that he's, for me, so eloquent. These solos are so well constructed in his straight blues playing. His tone is incredible. He never really relied on much in the way of effects or anything, but uh, he's so expressive and says so much in his playing that even B.B. King acknowledged him and said he's the best, the master. He unfortunately suffered, uh, you know, this is well documented, a uh, breakdown and uh, deterioration, but he's had a comeback in a few years and I wish him well. I did eventually meet him when he played in New York uh, with his Splinter group, I don't know, 10 years ago and, you know, was so awed by the experience of finally meeting him. Uh, but what I really like about this record, even beyond Peter Green's playing is the songwriting and the overall attack because in the group besides Peter Green, first of all, you had two other amazing guitar players and songwriters, Danny Kerwin and Jeremy Spencer, who really should be better known, both of them, uh, joining with Peter Green to do this triple guitar attack, which is just unprecedented music that I know certainly of the time, and then the best rhythm section just about in the world, which is John McVie and Mick Fleetwood. But uh, to me, it all came together on this record. This is one of those records I carry with me on the road religiously pretty much every time I go on tour. I did a lot and lot of touring all over Europe in the 90s, mainly solo gigs, but sometimes with bands. And uh, I just listened to this endlessly on the road. And I've met other musicians who have told me the same thing. This is like an essential road album. I don't know why that is exactly other than there's a depth of the songwriting which goes beyond stereotype blues imagery and hits very spiritual notes in the writing. There's some songs on there, Showbiz Blues, which, you know, Peter Green sings as a solo piece, where it seems like he's talking directly to God. Now, whether or not you're a believer or not, I am. It makes no difference. I think people will recognize the honesty of such a song. And you sit there so green. Believe me, man, I'm just the same as you. It just strikes chords in me as a musician who's been on the road for a long time. There's some amazing jamming that predates the whole jam band scene and you know it's contemporaneous a little bit with uh, you know the Grateful Dead in the period which I could listen to endlessly the riffing is totally inventive it's free of cliches the grooves they rock like a motherfucker on this record I mean it's just deep it's the essence of a brilliant progressive rock album to me of the of the period I have a little anecdote it's it's sad to to note though that when I met Peter, I brought the record for his autograph 
And uh, he struggled to even recognize himself on it. He looked it up and down. He said, am I on this? You know? So I said, Peter, that's then play on. And he said, oh, yeah, okay. And he found his picture on the back cover. I brought up the British edition, which has a black cover with white lettering, but a color photo of the band on the back. Found his little picture on the back on uh, Primrose Hill, it looks like. And he writes under his name, Peter Greenbaum, which is his real name. Okay, so from one Jewish guitar player to another, I just want to say thank you, Peter Green, for all the beautiful music you brought into our lives.